I'm not too old for this. You will not. We're not too old for this. We're not too old for this. We're not too old for Say it like you believe it. We're not too old for this. Yeah. Danny Glover is an American actor, director, and producer who has many outstanding works in his portfolio. Despite his successful movie career, our hero considers his main achievement in life to be political and social activities, which he has been engaged in since his youth. We will tell you about this and much more in this video. Danny Glover how the Lethal Weapon star lives and what he spends his millions on. Daniel Laverne Glover was born on July 22, 1946 in San Francisco, California. The future actor was the eldest of five children of James and Carrie Glover. His parents worked as postal clerks and were also social activists. They were members of the NAACP and dedicated their lives to fighting for the rights of African Americans. The example of his parents inspired Danny to fight racial discrimination later in life as well. As a child, Glover was very fond of sports. He enjoyed basketball, football, and baseball. Danny got his passion for sports from his father, who was a great influence and role model for the boy. By the way, James Glover is a World War II veteran. Danny had epilepsy as a teenager, but starting at age 35, he no longer had seizures. The young man was also known to suffer from dyslexia, a disorder that causes difficulty in mastering writing and reading skills. Danny attended George Washington High School in San Francisco. After graduating in the mid-1960s, he enrolled at San Francisco State University there but never graduated. Nearly 30 years later, he did receive his Doctor of Arts degree from this university and was also awarded the Presidential Medal of Honor for his service to education. As a student, Glover was a member of the Black Students' Union and participated in a five-month strike to demand that the university establish a Department of Black Studies, the first of its kind, in the United States. After that, the future actor got a job in the city administration in the Department of Community Development, where he worked on social issues. At the same time, he trained at the Black Actors Workshop of the American Conservatory Theater. Danny was so impressed with theater activities that he decided to devote his life to it. An important factor in this decision was the thought that by becoming famous, he would have even more opportunities to address social issues. The actor developed his skills at the Shelton Actors Lab in San Francisco. After becoming a famous actor, Danny, in an interview, stated that most of his success he owes to Gene Shelton, the founder of this school, who passed on to him passion for acting. In 1975, Glover married for the first time. His fiancée was jazz singer Asaki Bomani, who was a social activist just like him. Danny met the girl when he was still a student, and from the first minute he realized that they were made for each other. The man looks back on that special day with fondness. Glover was so shy to introduce himself to Asaki that when he finally made up his mind, he only said, hi, and quickly left. The girl was shocked because Danny was famous at the university for his eloquence and courage, and when he saw her, he was bewildered. Nevertheless, the young people soon developed a friendship which eventually grew into love. A year after their marriage, Asaki gave birth to Glover's daughter, Mandisa. His wife supported the actor in all his endeavors, and when he finally decided to devote himself to acting, she was all for it. Danny resigned from city administration after six years of service and moved with his family to Los Angeles, where there were more opportunities to build a career. In 1979, the aspiring actor played in an episode of the series BJ and the Bear, and then also made his debut on the big screen, starring in the action movie Escape from Alcatraz. In the film, he appeared in a brief scene with Clint Eastwood as one of the prisoners. A little later, Glover starred in the TV series Lou Grant and Paris, and simultaneously the man performed on the theater stage. He made his Broadway debut in a play by South African playwright Athel Fugard, Master Harold and the Boys. Over time, Danny, along with actor Ben Guillory, co-founded the Roby Theater Company, named after actor and singer Paul Robeson. 
The company was created to give African-American actors and writers a platform to showcase their talents. In the early 1980s, Glover's filmography was expanded by the series The Greatest American Hero, Palmerstown, USA, Hill Street Blues, Gimme a Break, Chiefs, as well as the movies Choo Choo and The Philly Flash, Deadly Drifter, The Face of Rage, Memorial Day, Iceman, and Places in the Heart. In the latter, the actor played Mose, an African-American man who helps an inconsolable widow with two children and a farm to survive the years of the Great Depression. The role of the widow in the movie was performed by Sally Field, who even received an Oscar for it, and their collaboration became the brightest work in Danny's career at that time. Got a nice hen house over here. Of course, it's about ready to fall down. Yeah. Lively, good-looking milk cow. In 1985, Danny starred in the drama And the Children Shall Lead, Western action movie Silverado, crime film The Stand-In, and romantic thriller Witness, in which he played the role of a corrupt cop McPhee who committed a crime. The movie was warmly received by the public and proved to be commercially successful. It also received good reviews from critics and was nominated for Oscars in eight categories, winning in two of them. What are you doing, man? Wash my hands, man. What? Come on, man. Get out of here. Blue tank. That same year, Glover played one of the lead roles in Steven Spielberg's drama The Color Purple. In the film, the actor portrayed cruel Mr. Albert, who married young Seeley, played by Whoopi Goldberg, and made her life miserable. Danny's performance received positive reviews from critics, and the movie itself was nominated for 11 Oscars. Papa, didn't I tell you to clean my saddle? I did do it, Paul. Papa, look at the mold on the <laughs> In 1986, the actor appeared in an episode of the series Tall Tales and Legends, and in the following year, he starred in the drama Mandela, playing the South African political activist and fighter against racial discrimination. This subject is very close to Glover, so he handled his character brilliantly. The actor was nominated for an Emmy Award for his portrayal of Nelson Mandela. In 1987, there was also the premiere of the action movie Lethal Weapon, which tells the story of two policemen, Martin Riggs and Roger Murtaugh, played by Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Before the filming began, they observed work at the police department, underwent physical training, and learned how to handle weapons. In the movie script, Glover's character is about 50 years older and he's about to retire, but in reality, the actor was only 40 years old at the time of filming. By the way, thanks to Lethal Weapon, Danny made perhaps the most notable contribution to pop culture in the form of the iconic phrase, oh, I'm too old for this sh Every moviegoer knows it today. The movie became one of the most famous action movies of the 1980s and the best in the genre of buddy cop movies. Basically. Guess what? What? I don't want to work with you. Hey, don't. No. Ain't got no choice. Looks like we both the f Terrific. In 1988, Glover played a supporting role in the drama Place at the Table and one of the main roles in the military drama Bat 21, portraying a rescue pilot. The following year, Danny narrated the short animated film How the Leopard Got His Spots and appeared in the sequel Lethal Weapon 2. The film Dead Man Out, the TV series Lonesome Dove, and a TV film for PBS's American Playhouse series called A Raisin in the Sun. In Lonesome Dove, the actor played Scout Joshua and was nominated for an Emmy Award for his role. In 1990, Danny starred in the drama To Sleep With Anger for his role in which he received positive reviews from critics and the Independent Spirit Award. He also appeared in the sci-fi action film Predator 2, in which he played the role of Harrigan, a tough cop fighting alien creatures. The movie was very popular among the viewers, and Glover's acting was highly praised by critics. Keep being suspicious, Danny boy! It has not been a nice day! 
Later, based on Predator 2, they released a video game of the same name, as well as toys portraying characters from the movie. In 1991, Danny joined the voice cast of the animated series Captain Planet and the Planeteers, and also starred in the movies Flight of the Intruder, A Rage in Harlem, Grand Canyon, and Pure Luck, in which he played a private detective who traveled to Mexico in search of the missing daughter of a prominent businessman. The following year, the actor expanded his portfolio with another buddy cop movie, Lethal Weapon 3. After the movie premiered, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson won the MTV Channel Award for Best On-Screen Duo. Bomb spots on the way. Now, there's no bomb in there. How, how can you be sure of that? Well, because it's a full moon. A hey, moon, lunar, lunatics are everywhere. Huh? Hey, is that Greek? No, no, Latin, man. Latin? And you surprised the shit out of me. Hey, hey, look, there's no bomb in there. It's probably a uh, false... The movie was a resounding success. The box office receipts almost 10 times exceeded its budget. In honor of this, Warner Brothers Studio organized a party for the team of project creators where they gave everyone a black Range Rover SUV, including Danny. In 1993, the actor appeared in three episodes of the TV series Queen and starred in the movie Bofa, playing a police officer who, faced with interracial issues, must make a difficult choice between family and work. He also played a Vietnam War veteran in the drama The Saint of Fort Washington, which tells the story of the hard and tragic lives of homeless people struggling to survive every day on the dirty streets of New York City. This woman's gonna be positively radiant before I'm through. <laughs> yeah, it makes my heart jump for joy to see such radiance. <laughs> what about you, mister? Your little heart going pity pat, pity pat? Then, Danny voiced one of the characters in the animated series Happily Ever After, Fairy Tales for Every Child, starred in the films Maverick, where he played a bank robber, Angels in the Outfield, and Operation Dumbo Drop, and appeared in an episode of the series Fallen Angels, for his role in which he was again nominated for an Emmy Award. In 1996, Glover starred in the drama America's Dream, and the following year, he appeared in the adventure comedy Wild America in the historical drama Buffalo Soldiers, and in the detective thriller Switchback, in which he played a friendly-looking man who ended up being a dangerous criminal. Danny also appeared in the crime comedy Gone Fishing, in which he co-starred with Joe Pesci. The actor's fee for his role in the film amounted to $2 million. As he himself later admitted, he agreed to participate in the making of this movie solely because of the money. Florida palm tree in the oh, flesh. smoke. Gosh, I never thought I'd see a palm tree. You reckon a million dollars, Joe? Yeah, I feel like two million. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go eat. Yeah. And then fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the same period, Glover began his activity as a producer, creating the company Carry Films, under which they released many films of aspiring directors. In 1998, Danny voiced the characters of cartoons Ants and The Prince of Egypt, and also starred in the horror film Beloved with Oprah Winfrey, who also acted as a producer of the picture. The film was based on the novel of the same name by American writer Toni Morrison, the rights to screen adaptation of which she acquired back in 1987, right after its publication. According to Oprah, after reading the book, she imagined herself and Danny Glover as the characters, but it took 10 years to bring the novel to the screen. 18 years. I swear, I've been walking every one of them. In addition, the actor appeared in the sequel of the franchise, Lethal Weapon 4. After the release of the movie, the actor was nominated for the MTV Channel Award for Best Action Scene and received a fee of $7 million. You're so excited. <laughs> Go spit, Rick! <laughs> Come on, I'll buy you a dog. Hey, 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 don't put your hands around me when I'm next. Well, sure. Danny has also been a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Development Program since 1998. The celebrity devotes a lot of focus on philanthropy, giving money to foundations to fight various diseases. Then, Glover's filmography was expanded with the projects Our Friend, Martin Bozeman and Lena, and Freedom Song. Although these films were not popular with the audience, the man was nominated for a Screen Actors Guild Award and an Emmy for his role in the latter. In 2000, Danny divorced his spouse, citing irreconcilable differences. Despite this, they maintain their friendship and still keep in touch. 
In 2001, the actor starred in the crime drama 3AM and the comedy drama The Royal Tenenbaums. Yes? Will you marry me? I, I love you. Uh, did you already know that? No, I didn't. In the latter, he played Henry Sherman, who looks a lot like UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. The film's director, Wes Anderson, decided to emphasize this nuance after Glover, who personally knew Annan, introduced Anderson to him at an event. Then, the actor's portfolio was expanded by the movies Good Fences, The Law and Mr. Lee, The Cookout, Legend of Earthsea, and Saw, in which he played Detective David Tapp. It took only five days to prepare for the shooting of this movie. The filming process itself lasted 18 days. According to some reports, Danny was to receive a fee of 2% of box office receipts, which ended up totaling just over $2 million. Uh, how can I help you, gentlemen? Are you able to tell us where you were between the hours of 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. last night, Doctor? Why is it that you're interested? We'd like to ask you a few questions about it. The actor didn't stay away from social and political issues either. He has been an outspoken critic of the Iraq War and George W. Bush Jr.'s policies, calling him a racist. In 2005, Glover appeared in the TV series ER and also starred in Missing in America, The Exonerated, and Manderley, which deals with the subject of slavery. At first, Danny refused to star in this movie, but after a second offer, he did agree to play the dark-skinned slave, William. We've taken all the family's weapons. No. I'm afraid of what will happen now. I feel we ain't ready. The following year, the actor voiced the characters in the animated films Barnyard, The Adventures of Br'er Rabbit, and also starred in the adventure comedy The Shaggy Dog, drama Bamako, and the musical Dreamgirls. For the role in which he and his colleagues were nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Cast. In 2007, Glover voiced a character in the animated film Battle for Terra and also starred in the films Honey Dripper, Namibia, The Struggle for Liberation, Four Boys Game, and Shooter, in which he played Colonel Johnson. By the way, this film was the 15th in his career where he portrayed a character working in law enforcement. Simultaneously, the celebrity was active in the political life of his country. He has publicly spoken out about presidential candidates, and while he has criticized Barack Obama in many ways, he did support him in the 2008 election. At the same time, Danny was a voice actor for the animated film Unstable Fables, Tortoise vs. Hare, and also appeared in the series Brothers and Sisters in the comedy Be Kind Rewind, the drama Gospel Hill, and the thriller Blindness. In 2009, Danny starred in the horror movie Night Train and in the sci-fi disaster film 2012, where he portrayed the President of the United States. The world as we know it will soon come to an end. Glover also appeared in the TV series Night Tales and My Name is Earl. Funnily enough, he only appeared in the latter as a cameo, but managed to utter his signature line, I'm too old for this sh which belongs to his character from the movie Lethal Weapon. Also in 2009, the actor married for the second time. His fiance was Brazilian teacher Elian Cavaleiro, 20 years younger than him. The wedding ceremony was private and only close family and friends attended. The couple met back in 2003 at an event in Brazil and realized they had a lot in common. The girl, like Glover, is a social activist with more than 50 publications on social topics to her credit. Elian currently holds a faculty position at one of California's top universities. By the time she met Danny, she was already raising two sons from a previous marriage. The couple has no children together. In 2010, Glover took part in the voiceover of the documentary For Love of Liberty, the story of America's black patriots, and the animated film Alpha and Omega. He also appeared in an episode of the TV series Human Target and in the movies Down for Life, I'm Still Here, Death at a Funeral, Dear Alice, Legendary, Five Minarets in New York, I Want to Be a Soldier, and Muslim. 
The man bravely spoke at various rallies and protests more than once. For example, in 2010, he called on all actors at the Oscars to boycott Hugo Boss because the company undercut workers' wages. By the way, a few years later, Danny led another protest, this time against another company, Nissan. He has been arrested multiple times for attending rallies, but that doesn't stop the actor, as he continues to advocate for the rights of workers, immigrants, and refugees. In 2011, Danny's portfolio was supplemented by the TV series Psych and Leverage, as well as the films Son of Morning, Heart of Blackness, Mysteria, Donovan's Echo, and Age of the Dragons. Most of these movies went unnoticed by the general public. The following year, Glover starred in the detective series Touch, the action film Sin's Expiation, the western Hannah's Law, and the crime drama Love. Then, his filmography was expanded by the projects Highland Park, Muhammad Ali's Greatest Fight, Chasing Shakespeare, Space Warriors, Tula the Revolt, Ironside, American Dad, Extraction, Badasses, Supremacy, Rage, Ninja Immovable Heart, Day of the Mummy, Beyond the Lights, 2047 Sites of Death, and Yellowbird. None of these projects left a bright mark in the career of the actor. In 2015, Danny starred in the films Badasses on the Bayou, Toxin, Gridlocked, About Scout, Checkmate, Waffle Street, Andron, and Diablo, and the following year, he could be seen in the TV series Criminal Minds and Mozart in the Jungle, as well as the movies Dirty Grandpa, Mr. Pig, Back in the Day, Monster Trucks, Complete Unknown, Pushing Dead, Dark Web, 93 Days, and Almost Christmas. In the latter, the actor played the head of a large but dysfunctional family who have to put up with each other for the entire Christmas break. Expecting you in a day or two or three. If I'd have known, I would have... Uh, Dusted? Damn, Walt. <coughs> changed the locks. <laughs> Your ass is old, so I'm gonna let that one slide. <laughs> now, I just... Then, Danny's filmography was expanded with the movies Extortion, The Good Catholic, The Curse of Buck Out Road, The Christmas Train, Come Sunday, The Old Man and the Gun, Sorry to Bother You, Ulysses, A Dark Odyssey, Proud Mary, Christmas Break-In, and Death Race Beyond Anarchy. In 2019, Glover could be seen in The Last Black Man in San Francisco, Jumanji, The Next Level, and The Dead Don't Die. And the following year, he appeared in the TV series Blackish. In 2022, Danny starred in the movies American Dreamer and Press Play. Laura. Oh, good kid, smarter than he looks. Or, or is it that he looks smarter than he is? I guess the jury's still out on that. The same year, the media learned of Glover's divorce from his second wife. It was rumored that the couple broke up four years ago. After the divorce, the man was seen vacationing with real estate agent Regina, and their relationship is growing strong. At the moment, the actor is still active in cinema. This year saw the premiere of the TV series I'm a Virgo and the thriller Double Soul. Filming of Long Day Journey and Killing Winston Jones has already been completed. The movie Lethal Weapon 5 and many other projects are also in the pipeline. By the way, the director of the fifth installment of Lethal Weapon will be Mel Gibson, who received his blessing for this from the director of the previous parts of the franchise, Richard Donner, just before his passing. Danny already has about 50 films to his credit in which he acted as a producer and four directorial projects, including two short films. Danny Glover remains politically and socially active. Throughout his life, he has been an ardent supporter of civil rights, economic and social justice, and environmentalism. For example, in recent years, the actor has been promoting the use of electric cars. Glover has received many awards, medals, and decorations from various international organizations for his service to the society. In 2022, he was honored with the Gene Herschelt Humanitarian Award from the American Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for his outstanding individual contributions to humanitarian causes. Today, Danny's net worth is estimated at $40 million, which he earned not only from movie royalties, but also from advertising contracts. At one time, he appeared in commercials for Miller Beer, MCI Software Interface, Visa Payment System, and Samsung Phones. And as part of his social activism, Danny promoted the Pan-African Film Festival, which is held in Los Angeles. The actor owns several real estate assets, 
In 1990, he purchased an 8,000-square-foot residence in San Francisco, California for $1.55 million. After his divorce from his first spouse, Danny left this real estate to her and their daughter. Now the house is owned by a different person and its value is estimated at $10 million. In 1999, Glover bought a mansion in a suburb of Portland, Oregon for $1.3 million. The 6,000-square-foot property includes five bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, spacious living rooms, kitchen and dining room. The grounds include a lush garden with gazebos. The actor has not lived in the house since 2011. A few years earlier, the celebrity sold a property in Sonoma, California, and now Glover owns a 2.5 million mansion in San Francisco. The cozy and modern house has several bedrooms, bathrooms, living rooms, kitchen and dining room. To date, the filmography of the actor has about 200 films, while he does not have a lot of awards. Most critics call Danny Glover an underrated actor. Do you agree with this opinion? Gotta go, man. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.